right, so someone says, whenever I hear tuning, I think witchcraft. I generally don't have any idea of what's going on. Can you explain at an entry level, but technical viewpoint, what you do when you do tuning? Yeah, um, I, it's understandable uh, why you would think that. Um, tuning is uh, a very technical, uh, yeah, m much to the opposite of witchcraft. <laughs> well, I don't know. Witchcraft isn't really it's, real, but if it was, it would probably be very technical too. It's, right? it's, like, it's one of those like for the for the common uh, you know individual, it's a un, non understandable thing. So it, it just falls into the, the witchcraft category where yeah, you know, understand the ins and outs and how it's doing things. I, I think a better word might be magic, um, yeah. which yeah. doesn't exist, but it's it's a it's kind of a per perception, but. Um, that that notion is propagated by a lot of companies in the tuning industry as well as every industry where it's beneficial for companies to uh, keep customers in the dark technically speaking um, so that they can kind of sell customers products where customers could never question it because customers don't have enough ability to decipher whether what they're getting is good or bad. Um, and that's that's not how we operate. So I wanted to make that point is we're very transparent about what we do in our tuning. If you go on our uncut channel, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of clip outs of us talking in depth uh, in layman's terms, but also very technically of what we do when we tune or what we do when we develop or create any product that we sell. Um, but I, I think I'm well suited to to give this like you've seen answer. A thing, you've seen a thing or two in, yeah. um, in layman's terms because I'm I'm not Nate's much more technical than I am as far as actually doing tuning. However, um, well these days, I mean, you were I, you know, I, starting out. That wasn't the case, yeah, right? I used to do all the tuning. Was, yeah, the, all the, the standalone was yeah. was developed around the things you were. You yeah, were but I still have a lot of knowledge for, from that, um, and uh, but but I'm also good at just kind of putting words in, in, into plain. Uh, in a plain way. So um, when it comes to tuning an ECU specifically, every engine has a control unit, electronic control unit or an ECU that manages the operation of the engine. Um, how an engine generates combustion and continues to run and continues to operate under a myriad of different conditions uh, and factors and variables is uh, through this complex uh, electronic network of programming and electrical functionality that the ECU uh, manages for the engine. So an engine itself can't run itself, uh, although it has everything, uh, everything that's attached to an engine allows an engine to run and to operate. Um, the ECU is what coordinates all these actions. And so in order to create at a basic level combustion, um, a, cil a cylinder has to be at a certain position in its stroke. Um, there has to be fuel that's injected a very precise amount of fuel and the spark plug has to fire or ionize at an exact moment down to, you know, in the milli millisecond range um, for combustion to uh, create enough pressure to push the piston back down to create torque and, and, and power. Um, all this is managed in the ECU. So there are, there are thousands of maps inside the ECU that dictate how much fuel is injected, when the fuel is injected, you know, when the spark fires, how long the coil charges for before, um, you know, the, the current in the coil discharges through the spark plug, um, um, adjustments for temperature, for, for barometer or barometric pressure, um, for water temp, for air temp, you know, you know, oxygen or, or air fuel ratio of the exhaust gases is measured. Um, you know, there's there's dozens and dozens of different sensors that go into this, the NOx sensing system. Um, all that data goes into the ECU. The ECU processes it thousand times a second or, or even thousand times a millisecond and um, runs the engine. So when we get a car from Audi as a tuning company, it's it's pretty pretty perfect right out of the box for what the factory wanted it to do, which in the case of a B9S4, let's say, is to make 350 horsepower um, and, and 
to be optimized with the size of injectors and the type of plugs that, it, that they spec and the size of the turbocharger, the exhaust system, uh, all these different factors. And so when a customer brings their B9S4 to us, they're, they're asking us to make it more powerful, to make it more fun to drive, to, to, to give them a, a more sporting driving experience, to be able to beat their buddy's Ford Mustang or whatever. And so we go into those maps and we begin to augment and reprogram the mapping in the ECU um, so that the ECU asks the turbocharger for more boost by um, modifying the control system of the wastegate system that controls boost pressure. And then we go in and we give it more fuel that's needed uh, you know, for the higher boost levels. And then we adjust the timing maps and we go and we adjust thousands and thousands of variables and maps inside the ECU. In some case, we're re-engineering re um, the, the base programming in the ECU to, to create functionality that that the car never even came with. And, uh, and so it's 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 extremely complicated and technical. But once you understand how to do it, like for our calibrators, it, it's it's a pretty uh, I wouldn't say easy, but it's a very they're very capable at taking these cars and and doing the types of things that we as a company want to do with these cars to change the performance uh, that you, you feel and experience when you drive the car. So that's, that's a kind of a real basic level, but um, and it's, it's, it's literally changing the way the engine is controlled to create a different outcome. You want to add anything to that? I mean, that's uh, from high level. That's basically yeah. it. I mean, you, we've got thousands of different knobs that, you know, you can go back to the most simple engine. That's got a <clears throat> distributor, a carburetor, and, uh, you know, a, a couple of points to make spark, um, and you can change the timing by twisting the distributor, you know, that's kind of your knob and you've got mm -hmm. some jets and screws and whatnot on the carb, um, you know, take that multiply by, you know, tens of thousands of screws and knobs. Um, and then, you know, you've got all these other components, of the motor that can move around now. Um, so it's just, it's just a more advanced system. So you need a computer to control it. The computer controls everything. So, um, it's just reprioritizing different, you know, effects and outputs that we want that the OEM necessarily you know, doesn't necessarily want, um, or, you know, is, is, has a, the OEMs all have a different goal. So they're shooting for, you know, an advertised horsepower number, a certain feel that fits in their lineup of cars. And, you know, that's, that's, and, and all the need, environmental, all the, and... Well, and then, yeah. And then they, they need it for the 99th percentile. So they can sell the most cars, um, you know, and we're, we're catering to the, you know, the top couple percentile of enthusiasts where they want something a little more responsive, a little more powerful, uh, a little more, uh, you know, performance oriented than, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a normal sitting. Yeah. Uh, this is a follow-up question. How complex are Bosch ECUs used in B8s and C7s compared to something like an AM Infinity in regards to things like map resolution? That's a hard one to answer. The Infinity and, and some of the new ECUs, um, they have a lot of computational power and it's going to depend on, it's not necessarily the map resolution, it's, it's, all of the modeling and how the math is used and where it goes. You can have a, you know, a 64 bit floating point math channel with a, you know, all this ridiculous resolution. But if you have some fundamental, you know, basic formulas and, and models and math behind it, that it affects, it's not going to do much for you. So it's, it's the number of considerations that are in the OEM ECUs to encapsulate, you know, the, all of the environmental conditions, all of the modeling that goes into the the, um, the control systems, the models, just to bolster up what those maps are doing. Um, it has a lot of, um, you know, simulation and, and mathematical models behind it um, so that it's trying to be one yeah. step ahead versus reactive. Yeah, so to, you know, to kind of give an example, uh, you know, Bosch is a company that re researches internal combustion engine technology and, and functionality. And that research goes into these models that are built into the ECU. That's not something AEM can, can do nearly at the at AEMs have, have been there. I know the founder, it's, it's a great company, but it's a, it's a relatively tiny, small little aftermarket tuning company compared to Bosch, which is uh, an OEM to uh, you know, almost all the German um, automotive manufacturers. So they're well, and Ford and yeah, I mean, they're every they're yeah. worldwide. Every, they're, they're, they're selling you know, millions and millions of ECUs a year and, and the kind of revenue that gets generated is in the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So, so they, they could, they could, you know, easily justify spending $20 million a year 
um, carefully researching, you know, internal combustion. I mean, they're, they're the companies that, that pushed, you know, the kind of, kind of clean diesel forward. Um, the FSI fuel stratified direct injection was, you know, engineered by Bosch. So they have actual patents on a lot of this stuff with that armed with that knowledge. They, they put that knowledge and power into the, into the program of the ECU so that the ECU can predict what the engine is doing even far beyond what the data that's coming in suggests. Um, so if you have, uh, if you can build a model with enough data that you've generated from studies and statistical analysis, then you can predict what the engine is going to do even before it does it with just a few variables. And you can, you can solve for that equation, you know, millions of times a minute. Um, and so while the AM, you know, anyone can stick a real fast product, like to Nate's point, you can stick a real expensive, fast processor in an ECU, but and you can build maps, but uh, when, when it comes to something like an AM or even a MoTeC or an aftermarket ECU, it's not going to have that kind of data and research and R&D behind it. So my opinion, you know, we started out as a standalone company and, and in those days, uh, the standalones did did compete, you know, especially with like the limited functionality of like the early oh, yeah. Bosch Motronic yeah. ECUs and, and stuff, you know, kind of the EFI from the nineties, which was just really early EFI. But nowadays I think it's really hard to be at a factory ECU. And if you're, yeah, if you're within like the normal ecosystem of like the staged tunes and you're not doing some crazy exotic thing or some custom race car thing. Um, yeah. The OEM ECUs are going to be really hard to build. The, the, the biggest reason why you see aftermarket companies using Standalone ECUs like that is because they can't do what we do. They can't. Right. There's they some, can't there's, there's, yeah, they're 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 bound by something that the, yeah they can't figure out in the stock ECU. And I mean, you see this with like underground racing and some of these. You know, they're doing like two thousand horsepower Lamborghinis yeah. and R8s, but they rip out the factory ECU because they they don't know how to they they don't know how to program. Yeah, there's there's some limitation. That yeah, they can't get around in it. And those cars inevitably just will never run as well as a car on a factory ECU, especially things like all response and shifting and um, idling and light load cruising conditions, you know, where you want real smooth uh, performance, it's, it's hard to do. Yeah. Uh, standalones do wide open throttle really well. And frankly, anyone well, can, they can for wide open. Yeah, they can usually drive pretty well, but it's all of the edge cases. It's all of the other conditions where you end up, you can almost always tell you've got a, yeah. you know, a standalone setup uh, or, you know, some other completely non OEM ECU in there. Um, well, I remember even there. when we were doing zero through four EFI, every time I get into like a factory car with like, you know, Motronic three, you know, <laughs> it would always just start right up and, and yeah, I so nicely. Got, it's, it's got a whole, we could never get our standalone to do that. I mean, I tried. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a lot harder to do. Yeah. Yeah. 